Jacob Israel lived his last 17 years of life in Egypt, his last 17 of his total 147 years. Israel made Joseph promise that when he died, that they wouldn't bury him in Egypt. Israel also told Joseph that God considered Joseph's sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, his own sons. He considered them his sons. Every bit as much as Reuben and Simon were his sons, so are Ephraim and Manasseh. Israel called the two sons of Joseph forward and blessed them. Interestingly, when Israel was blessing them, his right hand was on Ephraim and his left hand is on Manasseh, which was backward according to their birthright traditions. The right hand went on to the older son. But Israel said no. They would both be blessed, but the younger son, Ephraim, would become more important than his older brother, Manasseh. As we've seen earlier, that's exactly what happens, for the entire northern kingdom will eventually be called Ephraim. This follows the biblical pattern of the younger sons becoming greater than their older counterparts, going completely against the culture of the day. Israel, knowing that his days are few, calls the rest of his sons together, and he blessed them, each by name and each with specific blessings of their own. When he had finished his blessings, he crawled into bed and he died. Joseph had his father's body prepared in the tradition of the Egyptians. And all Egypt mourned for Israel. After conferring with Pharaoh, Joseph took his father's body, his whole family, and a retinue of Pharaoh's officers and servants. And with a huge procession of chariots, and all manner of humanity, they buried Israel in the land of Canaan. When they got back to Egypt, Joseph's brothers were worried that the only reason he wasn't punishing them was because of his father. And now that their father was dead, they feared for their lives. They lied to Joseph, telling him that their father had told them that Joseph was to let them live and live happily. Joseph knew immediately what they were doing, that they were lying. He broke down in tears, and he told them that they need not be afraid. He would provide for them and their families. Joseph lives to 110. He saw the grandchildren of Ephraim be born, and the children of Manasseh played on his lap. As he lay dying, he called his brothers and told them that God would attend to their needs now. He died. They embalmed him again in the tradition of the Egyptians, and he, Joseph, was buried in Egypt. This is how the book of Genesis ends. But I would be remiss if I didn't fast forward a little bit into the book of Exodus. For at the end of Genesis... All ends well. The Egyptians have been saved from famine and made exceedingly wealthy because of a son of Israel. The family of Israel was so prominent that they were given some of the best land that Egypt had to live on. And when Jacob Israel died, the whole country mourns his death. But while that is the end of Genesis, that is not the end of the story. For as we've seen, every success and blessing is followed by rejection and loss. Exodus 1.8 reads, A new king, or pharaoh, arose over Egypt who didn't remember Joseph. Exodus begins with amnesia, an amnesia which shrouds almost everything that had gone before. The children of Israel have been celebrated guests of Egypt because of Joseph's insight and leadership. He saved them. But all of that is now forgotten. And therefore, the next chapter of Israel's history will know years and years of suffering and loss before the pendulum swings upward again.